Now, reckless lending and aggressive debt collection. That's the charge being levelled by the Office of Fair Trading against dozens of payday loan companies. It says most of the 50 firms it inspected simply failed to meet acceptable standards. The comments come as an investigation for this programme has uncovered evidence that companies are failing to check whether those taking out the loans can really afford to repay them, despite legal obligations to do so. Our business correspondent Sarah Smith has this exclusive report. On high streets where the shops are shutting, payday lenders are thriving. Making well over five million loans this year so far, business will only get better as Christmas approaches. For many of their customers, they are a lifeline, quick and easy credit for people who can't borrow money elsewhere. But do lenders take the care they should to make sure they're lending to the right people? There are remarkably few laws that govern how payday lenders operate. They can charge any rate of interest they like. But they do have to make sure anyone who borrows money from them can, realistically, afford to pay it back. We have evidence some of them don't know whether or not their customers can afford the loans they're taking out. Andy's worked his way through dozens of payday loans. When he couldn't pay back one, he just took out another with a different company. Firms who lent him yet more money, even though he already had numerous other loans. Well, the day you get paid, everything went out. So you needed some money, that you needed money to live on to put, keep your roof over your head and food and, and fuel and that. So you're having to take more loans out to live on for that month and then you leapfrog again, like I explained before, you just keep leapfrogging to pay off, pay off, pay off until you come and hold your hands up and say, right, I've got to stop. Do you get a lot of these? Yeah, get loads. Andy is still you, bombarded with texts yeah. offering him yet more yeah. loans. They kept coming in whilst I was talking to him. And did you start getting more of these after you'd started taking yes. out loans? Yeah. Eventually, he ended up with 10 simultaneous payday loans he couldn't afford to pay off. The monthly repayments were almost twice his salary. You know, I'm not blaming, blame myself, but I'm not blaming, but it takes part of the blame on them. If they had done their job doing it, I wouldn't be in the position I am now where I got 10, 10 loans out. And, they sh and instead of just saying, right, you can have one loan and that is it. Text Loan were one of the companies Andy borrowed from. He was late repaying the fourth loan they gave him, and the fifth, and the sixth, yet they still gave him a seventh. When we spoke to them, they admitted they don't use external credit reference agencies to check their customers' credit worthiness. Quick Quid claim they have stringent credit and affordability checks. They also told us they don't lend money to people who've gone bankrupt. They would not explain why then they lent money to Andy Goodburn, who is an undischarged bankrupt. The Office of Fair Trading have today launched a formal investigation into the practices of payday lenders. They're concerned that lenders don't make adequate checks into whether customers can afford the loans they're being given especially when it seems to be so easy to take out multiple loans. The law clearly states, creditors should make a reasonable assessment of whether a borrower can afford to meet repayments in a sustainable manner. John Lush used to work for a payday lender, where, he says, his bosses told him doing these kind of credit checks properly was taking too much time and costing too much money. So your bosses didn't want to pay for extensive credit checks and they basically didn't want to know if people had a bad credit history? No, no, not at all. If, if you start doing that in the nature of payday loans and you're going to be, you're not going to get anywhere because really 80% of applicants, I could argue, should not be lent the money because they're falling behind on their existing credit and they're just going to get into a, what I call the cycle of debt and it's not ever going to be repaid. Did you know if people had other payday loans with other companies? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's common sense, really. The problem was people were going to the companies, borrowing the money, weren't able to pay it back, so borrowed more money, and so, and so the cycle continued. And I would say that f maybe three-quarters of people that were applying actually needed it just to simply stay still and pay off other debts. That's what this man was doing. Let's call him Bob, as he doesn't want us to reveal his true identity. He's embarrassed that he's had 80... That's right, 80 payday loans in the past, most of them for very large sums of money. When he couldn't pay back his first loan, he just took out another. Without much thinking, 
I approached another company and they, I, I was clear with them that I owed money to somebody else. They weren't that interested in that. What they were interested in is whether they could lend me money. And um, they said yes. So you're, you're, you're borrowing from one lender to pay off another lender, getting in a mess and having to go to yet another lender. Was it difficult to be able to get loans when you already had existing loans and you were using one loan to pay off another? They, they came back to me straight away with a yes. So it, it wasn't difficult at all. It was quite easy. So easy that debt charities have been swamped by calls from people who can't pay back multiple payday loans. If someone has um, got five or six payday loans adding up to their entire monthly income, that surely can't be responsible lending. So the challenge for the industry is to change that, to get those numbers down and to do it very quickly. The people who represent the payday loan industry have just moved into some very smart offices on London's prestigious Pall Mall. In here, they know they have to abide by the law that obliges lenders to make an assessment of whether a borrower can afford any loan. But they point out credit reference agencies only update their files monthly. We've been talking to a number of people who've had multiple simultaneous payday loans, the repayments on which added up to as much as their monthly salary. If people are able to take out all of these loans all at once, then there's no way the lenders are making what they have to, a reasonable assessment of whether a borrower can afford to meet those repayments. Yeah. At the moment, we can make affordability assessment with all the information we have available to us. One online lender, for example, looks at 30 different pieces of data. What we can't do at the moment is identify if someone the day before has taken out another loan and has come in to, to take out another loan and perhaps the next day is going to take another loan. Now, that's partly um, to do with systems and it's something that we, we're, we're addressing. But until there is a system of real-time data sharing in place, there is no way your members can know whether or not the people coming to them for loans can genuinely afford to repay them. That's right. We have to rely on people's honesty. We have to rely on all of the data we do have. We, this so, you, so you accept your members are not living up to the standards of making a reasonable assessment of whether a borrower can afford to meet the repayments? They're, they're absolutely using all the data that's available to them. And but you're saying the data's not good enough? They're acting in the most responsible way as we can at the moment, given the systems that we have in place. If we can get improvements to that system, then we become even more responsible borrowers than we are already. <laughs> Payday lenders love the lax regulation we have in the UK. And in austerity Britain, people are taking out payday loans just to try and cover their rent and their food bills. The less money people have, the more they're borrowing, making it boom time for payday. Now, if you are struggling with debt yourself, we do have a lot of information on our website about who you can contact. And if you have taken out a payday loan and would like to share your story, please do get in touch if you want to. That's channel4.com slash news. Well, joining me now is David Fisher, the Director of Consumer Credit at the Office of Fair Trading. David Fisher, you started your formal investigations, but given the information that's already out there and indeed what you've seen in Sarah Smith's report, what more do you need to know before you take action? Well, we already are taking action. Um, we've written today to all 240 payday lenders, putting them on notice that they really do have to, uh, to improve their standards. They need to raise their game. But you've been looking at this area for four years, so you've been a bit slow on the uptake, haven't you? I mean, now you've just said you expect to warn the majority of yeah. the 50 firms you've inspected that they risk enforcement action. It's not even a slap on the wrist, is it? Um, well, the first point I'd like to make about that is we've been actually investigating this section, this, uh, this part of the economy in detail since February, not for the last um, four years. Um, we have already, and we've announced today that we are taking uh, a formal invest we're taking formal investigations into a number of payday lenders whose uh, behaviour causes us immediate concern. But you have been looking at it since 2008, well, and yet indeed. are you applying the sanctions that you have, or perhaps you don't have the right sanctions, because you've only stripped two companies of their yeah. licence in eight years, and is a fine going to deter people, companies who are making mm. tens of millions of pounds in profit mm. a year? Well, I mean, you, you get to the heart of the, the dilemma in some senses, which is, uh, uh, one, that it does take time to establish a case uh, against a company, especially if we're going to go to take the extreme action of revoking its consumer credit license, which has the effect that it can no longer operate uh, in the market. So um, an investigation is a serious matter. It takes time. We have to prove our case. Um, but we would, we'll have no hesitation about taking such, act such actions yeah, But the uh, action if we have the you're evidence. taking might not actually deter a company that's making tens of millions, if not more, a year. 
Well, there, there is no doubt that some of these companies have a huge financial incentive uh, in, this, in, in this business. Um, but we are determined to use the powers that we've got uh, to, to tackle some of these issues. And I think that um, you know, warning all 240 of them, I mean, we are, we are making a very clear, very strong point here that we have concerns about the entire industry that needs to put its, uh, put its house in order. But you've had some of those concerns dating back four years. We have had some evidence of it. Um, and it was that evidence, that growing evidence that uh, that led us to just decide to focus on this particular section, this particular industry. Final question. Do you yeah. think that the new regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, should, in the, at the end of the day, have the power to cap the costs of payday loans? Well, capping the cost of uh, payday loans, capping the cost of, uh, of loans generally is a subject that the, uh, the government's um, commissioned some research into. Um, what do that, you think, though? Well, it's, it's an option. It's certainly an option, but um, capping loans, um, capping the cost of credit, for example, it has pros and cons. So I'd like to wait to see what that uh, analysis shows before we reach a view on it. David Fisher, thank you very much for joining us.